Welcome back to On The Line. I'm your host, Juan Roque. And talking about the key to victory against the Wazoo Cougars, it's a game that a lot of people expect ASU to win, but a lot of people expected ASU to win last season, too, and it didn't really work that way up in the Palouse. Uh, for whatever reason, the team just was not able to perform, and, of course, that loss preceded a bigger loss, which was a loss to U of A the following week. We're in a very similar situation again this season. So will history repeat itself? Well, it better darn not. And it's basically going to come down to one solitary factor. I've been harping on it all this week, and I'm sure you guessed it, offensive line play. The five guys that are lining up for Arizona State are playing the most important position on the field. Darn right I said it, the most important position on the field. Because without blocking, there is no run game. Without blocking, there is no pass game. Without blocking, quarterback can't find a receiver. So it all comes down to blocking. And this unit, I've kept quiet, been really... Easy on them for the past few weeks. Well, that's that's all coming to an end. They played like crap the last few weeks. They haven't gotten it done. It's not that they don't have the talent, but when you look at guys like Schwab, Jamil Douglas, Cody Kabensky, Andrew Sampson's been hurt. Hopefully, he'll be back this week. Evan Finkenberg. These are guys that can get it done. These are guys that have shown they have the ability and the talent to get it done. Well, they need to bring it all together in this one game. To me, the most important key to this game is Arizona State's offensive line. They need to get in there with an attitude, not an overtime game, not a close game. They need to run away with this game, and it starts with those guys up front. They need to knock people off the ball, get to the second level, get into these Cougars, control Travis Long, and basically run these guys from sideline to sideline all game long. This needs to be a big game for the offense. We're talking a 40-plus point effort, and then I would maybe start to back off a little bit of my criticisms, but right now, ASU's line has to get it done. That's my key to the game for this week. Please uh, join the conversation, as always, on our page. Uh, we'd like to hear from you. Also, click on to the next, uh, next segment, as Ryan is going to talk about his key to the game. So, please join us. Welcome to back to On the Line. I'm the Rhino, Ryan Knowles, and these are my keys to victory for the ASU Sun Devils against the Wazoo Cougars this Saturday. First, establish the run. This was something Todd Graham preached. Success in the run game when he first came to Tempe. You cannot start going away from it now, especially with the lack of talent on the outside getting exposed the way it has. Cameron Marshall, Marion Grice, and DJ Foster are quality backs. If you can get them 10 touches apiece, it gives them a chance to make plays, and you should see success on the ground. No, secondly, no Pullman repeats. Last year, ASU gave up nearly 600 yards of total offense as Connor Halliday picked them apart to the tune of nearly 500 yards and four touchdowns through the air. ASU really needs to come in with a chip on their shoulder. It's senior day. Snap, snap this four-game losing streak and get some confidence going into U of A next Friday. That'll do it for my keys. Click on to the next segment as I give you my good, the bad, and the ugly this week. And join the conversation below and tell me your keys to the game for victory. Welcome back to On the Line. I'm the Rhino, Ryan Knowles. And this is my good, the bad, and the ugly for this past week in sports. First of all, the good, the New Orleans Saints bouncing back from so many distractions, a bad start, you know, the off-the-field issues with Bounty Gates. Uh, playing quality football again, really culminating in a hard-fought win over their division rival, the unbeaten Atlanta Falcons, the previously unbeaten Atlanta Falcons, I should say. Really good news for a team that's been through so much this year, obviously having their coach suspended for the whole year, having a lot of their team leaders suspended for games, just going through a lot of distractions, and for them to bounce back with this, this you know, really quality win uh, is good news for a, a really a franchise and a city that certainly deserves it. The bad uh, QB injuries in the NFL, Ben Roethlisberger, Alex Smith, Michael Vick, and Jay Cutler all knocked out of Sunday's games with injuries. Smith, Vick, and Cutler all suffered concussions, which again is raising the NFL's biggest issue to the forefront. If these, I mean, if these high-profile players continue to suffer debilitating injuries, you know what else can the league really do to preserve their health? They already you know, pretty much uh, <laughs> protect them like they're made of glass. So, you know, it really raises the issue of what else they can do. And finally, the ugly uh, number one upset. Defending champ Alabama suffered its first loss in nearly a year, falling to Texas A&M this past Saturday, 29-24, dropping a tie to number four in the BCS standings. Now, how many unbeatens? Kansas State, Oregon, Notre Dame can really keep up the pace. And is there another BCS buster coming here in the next couple weeks? and Championship Saturday looming on the horizon. 
That'll do it for this week's Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Join the conversation below and tell me your Good, the Bad, and the Ugly for, good, the bad, and the ugly for this week. And click on to our next video to watch Roque's rant for this week. Welcome back to On the Line. I'm Juan Roque, your host as always. As we shut it down for this week and start winding it down, let's talk about a little bit uh, as far as the players. You know, players don't prepare during the week to lose a football game. They don't prepare to not play well. Uh, there are things that tend to happen in football. It, it's not a perfect game. It's not an exact science. One team may take the field higher than another team, and sometimes a team even gets lucky. Uh, it's okay to criticize. It's okay to be upset. But there is a line uh, between criticism and destructive comments, and we've been seeing that a lot with this football team. And Rhino touched on it several times during this, this past broadcast, as I will touch on it now. Uh, we, we need to get behind our team. We need to support them. Yes, we can criticize. I get frustrated with a lot of what I see. But what's important is that we remain united as a Sun Devil Nation. When we start to splinter and we start to take uh, counter sides and we start to question the staff and we start doing things, those things are now destructive. As a former player, trust me when I tell you, no team takes the football field with the intent to lose the game. No team takes the football field with the intent to throw five interceptions. No team takes the football field to commit fumbles. Those are things that just sometimes happen. Yes, some are avoidable. Absolutely. But we need to keep in mind that these are football players. These are young men who are doing their damn best. And sometimes we need to appreciate that. So let's rally behind the team. we got two games left. Big win, hopefully, against the Washington State Cougars. And then we got the day after Thanksgiving when we play the Rats down in Tucson. So hopefully it'll be an exciting finish. Let's get behind the team. Let's get to the stadium on Saturday. And let's cheer these Devils and let's send these seniors out on a high note. That's going to do it for this edition of On the Line. I'm always proud to be with you. Rhino, my brother, I love you, man. It's great to always have you. Please join us on the, our Facebook page. Join the conversation. We'd love to hear from you. You are the fans. You're what make this show go. God bless. We'll see you next week. And go Devils.